Part 2 of Journey Continues. Now the adventure really begins. They visit Kahalpech, an ancient Mayan ruin. Tall and rugged steps require a new technique. It's actually a really handy cane technique that Brian taught us to get upstairs. It's called touch and drag. Step, let it swing, step up. Okay, See, prep. and it hits step. Uh -huh. You can feel the cane hit step, yeah. step. Oh, and you feel how it swung free? Yeah. That's how you know it's free. Instead of holding on to someone's arm, Rattling a bunch of keys is used as an audio cue to lead the way. Rowan goes ahead and they reach a temple, but they are yet to discover it. There's something over here. Yeah, and what are the features on it here, Journal? It has a, it has a hollow a and, um, yeah. is a it hollow and triangular surface that it can bounce on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because it goes up and down, it's almost like we have a bunch of steps or like interior corners. It's like a pyramid. Mm -hmm. But it's all these rocks and they're all rounded, so it really is like a nice loud you know, popping sound. To me, we get the sense that we're up on a hill mm -hmm. and we have a nice sort of vista because we can hear the echoes and it sounds very open. Very. And there's definitely buildings there's or buildings. mountains around us. When they walk, you don't even hear their clicking. And yes, they are clicking, but the clicking is so quiet, it's just for themselves to be able to walk on their own. Oh. I see it. I was coming, I found the Grimba tree. I know you did. You <laughs> it down it's my tree. They're using their canes, they're trying new things, they're clicking and coming explorers of the world. It's great watching them tell their parents and friends to back off and let them try it on their own. Seeing my little boy growing up to be so independent, but it's so rewarding, and I can't believe how well the three of them have been doing. Two different songs. The hollow in the distance. Oh, cool. Very cool. They now navigate through passageways and rooms in the temple. Sounds like a cave. Who's going first? I'll go. Okay, go, bro. Go, keep going in the open tunnel. Oh, narrow. Really narrow. There's the exit here. Running movement, like you said. There you go. It's really cool. You can hear how it's super narrow and then it opens up. They find another room. Wow. This is quite huge. Whoa, oh, oh. Yes. A collocation is really, really exciting, really fun, interesting to learn because you want to have your own, your own life and freedom. Here we are, the Mayan ruins. After a strenuous morning, the group now relaxes at a local art gallery and each shows their talent. Juan shows his keyboard genius. Adventures are at Ian Anderson's Caves Branch Lodge, who sponsored three days and two nights of challenging activities. They fill up on a hearty breakfast before going on their first activity. The first challenge is a cave tubing trip carefully organized by the guides. 
Prepare to go down some steps and then we go into the bus and from there we have approximately 15 minutes ride uh, in between the citrus before we get to the cave. We got two minutes walk before we get to the river. Make you guys carry your tubes on your left hand side, yes. on your shoulder. Remember, this is a challenge for you. I know you like to hear that, Brian. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not here for 10 days to make it easy. And Brian's great. I mean, anytime we have a problem or something that we don't get, he's very patient. He doesn't give you the answer right away. And if you really don't get what you're doing wrong, then he lets us figure out how to solve our own problems. Getting outside and using echolocation is, is where it becomes more powerful. Getting into the tubes, they start their journey into the underworld. Juan has never paddled before and the guides give him a lesson. Everyone is having fun. They go a short distance to get used to the tubing, then stop closer to the entrance. Uh, the Mayas were coming to the caves to do very special ceremonies, such as bloodletting, grain offerings, and sometimes they were even going as far as performing human sacrifices. Mm. So I don't know if you guys, who is the volunteer today? Juan? I can try. You try? <laughs> you want to do just bloodletting or sacrifice? Sacrifice. We're gonna... <laughs> We're gonna do it. Guys, figure out the entrance by now, right? Yeah. So you're clapping? Yeah. Everything sounds the same to me. And we've learned to recognize hollow sounds versus flat sounds. And so the idea is, is can we keep our attention focused on the hollow sound and try to bring our way self into that space? Interesting. Yeah. Nice. And that's echo location. The students, using their echoes, guide the group into the underworld. I know you guys don't need headlamps, right? But uh, the headlamps will help us to see where you guys are at. See, we would use keys to keep track of each other, and they are going to use lights. <laughs> That's why we call it flash sonar. The click is symbolic of the headlight. When we click, that's like we're wearing a headlight on our forehead. Echolocation is even better than a light because sound will travel around corners. Sound will travel through things. Sound will travel in places that light cannot go. Out of their tubes, the group follow the underground river passage. Object analysis, location, where is this? And then we're asking dimension, and we're asking density. First, tease yourself with the questions. It's right in front of me. Okay. This has a high rise, right? Yeah. Clicking, I could see that it was a big pole-like object, but it wasn't straight. It had like ridges and grooves. It looked bendy. Like a tree then, like a tree halfway falling down. It's a stalactite. It's a formation coming up from the ceiling. It's approximately uh, 10 feet. Not a column or a pillar because it's not connecting to the floor as yet. And we cross the river to the other side and you can kind of hear how it angles down. Yeah. You can tilt your head up. You should look at it. It has high roofs. You can't touch the roof. On the roof there are creatures that also echolocate. The bats are roosting in a hole above them. They are scared out by the group. It's a big hole. They're created by the leaf nose fruit bats. It's making dirt. I'm dirt one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Juan, it's poop. Oh! <laughs> it was cool to see how the bats echolocated and while we were echolocating I thought who are these guys blocking off our echoes? They find the broken Maya grinding stone. And then they'll grind. Ah. Wow. So this is where the human sacrifice would take place, one. I've lived a good life. Yes. <laughs> has done a really good job so we'll, we'll save him for another time. So grab your pole again and then we're gonna go back to where we came from. And just that experience of having to use their cane, walking through the water on different type of terrain, experiencing those echoes, how the big room sound very different than the narrow passageways, sounds very different than the open space. Brian is just absolutely amazing. He is making this so much fun for them and we are reassured that they can do this on their own. The students are now in the lodge's botanical gardens. Here they use all their senses and discover the size, shape, and dimensions of each plant. So let's click and listen. It sounds really small. You hear him tapping? I think it's bouncing off a branch. Okay. okay. It was a branch. Leaves are interesting. What do you think this is? Have you oh. touched anything like this one? I ever touch Nice, they're smelling. Wow, smelling excellent. It. And it okay. tastes good. Peace. Papaya. Thank you. Excellent. Woo, I love this. This is all spice. <laughs> this is all spice. So that's just the leaf. You could drink this with tea? Yes, it's drunk as a tea. Oh, oh. Be careful. Oh. 
has a, it has <laughs> what? This is a pineapple. And what's a SpongeBob house? A pineapple. A pineapple, right? You can smell it from out here. <laughs> <laughs> These ones were once flowers. It does feel like flowers a little. One explains bee pollination and how these plants are fertilized. So the bees carry pollen along because the pollen is really sticky. So when it goes on another flower, it tends to, like the bee dust itself, dust some of the pollen off and it tends to fly through the wind. Excellent one. This feels like you a can't. caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> we call it the monkey tail. Oh, oh Tarzan vine. Tarzan vine. The botanical gardens were really cool because it was just so much to smell and taste and feel and so much to look at. It had all of your five senses in the sense. The last and most challenging adventure is a walk along a difficult hilly path in the forest. At first the guide uses the jingling keys to get them on the trail. Brian teaches them how to use the trekking pole. And you keep it in front of you, keep this on your left, and you keep your cane in front. As we were walking along I could click and determine where the trees are. It was either walk into the open spaces or bang your head off a tree. Like I saw this big bush in the way and with the echolocation I just jumped her and went around it. He used to afraid of being in the jungle and now he, he, he could go around touching things, clicking on something, knowing that it's not harmful. Echolocation it's going to help him a lot. We can do most things that sighted people can't detect. We can see through a wall. We can see a tree without even touching it. Solid. Uh-huh. Solid bone. Is there other things up close around the tree? Oh, there's some leaves around it. That's correct. There's vines growing on the tree. Now you guys can feel the tree if you want to feel it in me. Yeah, feel it. Now we're into sort of almost landscape analysis. It's so deep that there's things up close. There's also the open space behind these objects and closer to the ground. You gotta be asking yourselves almost more complicated questions yeah, because this environment is far much more complex. Touch it and then you tell me what you think. Juan makes an astute discovery, but everyone laughs. Maybe a termite hole? <laughs> <laughs> he is proven right. Wait, this what? is a termite mound. Are these termites <laughs> edible? Yes, have you tried them before? Yeah, they're nice. Go on a tree. You're eating termites? Yes. Yeah, you have a lot on you now. Really? Yeah. Can you feel them crawling? Down? <laughs> oh, they're very piney. <laughs> I think I'll put them in my salad later tonight. <laughs> what I was thinking about preparing for this trip, never could I have conceived eating termites. Use the cane as a light, graceful probe to find where you're going to put your footstep. Use that trekking pole. You can even sidestep, turn your body sideways if you have to. Coming here to Belize, working with Rowan, Juan, and Donovan have changed immensely in this time period. They're finding it fun to do it on their own. And it makes a lot of sense to me because it's more stimulating. You're more connected. You feel like you have more ownership of your environment and your movement and your just life. Rowan, Juan, and Donovan have broken the barriers and now they see that anything is possible through determination and practice. This echolocation is great because it actually enables me to feel much more comfortable moving around by myself. I have more confidence in echolocating because now I can go and explore. If I get in trouble, I can just click somewhere. Just enhance what I could do. So what is the future for you guys? How do we move forward as a group and as a team and as friends? Well, we need to practice and refine until we get really good at finding our way anywhere. Yeah. Get more motive, more, more self-confident in ourselves. Now that we discover echolocation, I think we can make a big breakthrough and we can actually see what the sighted people might be seeing. And more sometimes. We're just beginning to learn the potential of what is possible. We are living in a new era. We are no longer asking the question, what cannot blind people see? We are now asking, what can blind people see? The World Access for the Blind through the Belize Council for the Visually Impaired helped these star students by giving them a gateway to freedom. Brian's excellent teaching of flash sonar has opened the doors to a brighter future for them and other blind people in Belize.
is blinding down my head. 